Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so I'm going to talk about three resources today. Uh, Fire two, which uh, is uh, very similar to our last talk, Infold, MissSense 3D, which is a structure-based approach to assess the impact of genetic variants, and Guaya, a mapping of MissSense variants from Uniprot onto predicted and uh, experimental binary complexes. And this is in collaboration with Kansas University, in particular, Ilya Baxter's lab. So we've had an excellent introduction to structure prediction. So FIRE starts is, an, is a template based, it does it itself. And the whole approach is recognizing a template from which one builds an homologous structure. And here's the reference. It's highly popular. You can see that uh, 7,800 Google citations in the last seven years. So about a thousand citations. So the principle is, that homologous proteins have similar 3D structures. So 25% identity, the C alpha, C alpha trace, and you can see similarity. So if we have a magenta protein whose structure is unknown and the sire protein whose structure is known, we can perform a sequence search and identify the magenta sequence is similar to the cyan sequence and hence predict the structure of the magenta protein from the structure of the cyan protein. So you go from the cyan to the magenta protein. You then obtain the backbone. You then add the side chains. And there is your predicted structure. So obviously, this is a simplification. But the basic principle, which uh, Swiss model and most template based approaches follow, is similar to that. So similar to Infold, we have a nice simple interface. You paste the sequence, you give an email address, and uh, you press a button and you get your response in two hours. And since the FIRE system has been going, we've had more than 4 million submissions and the paper's 11,000 citations. So more technically, the approach is that you start with the query sequence, you use Cyblast to obtain a multiple alignment. We use David Jones's Cypred to get a secondary structure prediction. And this gives us a query hidden Markov model. We then scan this against a database of known structures, which are also represented by a multiple sequence alignment, the known secondary structure and a prediction. Using HH search matching hidden Markovs, we find significant hits, take the alignment, and that enables us to build the crude backbone where there's equivalence. In the loop regions, we employ spare part modeling. So we find known sections of the PDB that effectively span these regions, add the side chain, and this gives us the final model. And so the main results page is here. You get a list of the templates. You can click on the alignment. You get a model that you can download. You get a confidence that you've chosen the correct template. And you get some more information. And users find this very easy to evaluate. And clearly, it's popular. There are lots of advanced features. There's Fire Alarm, which I particularly like. And I'll explain that shortly. Backfire, where you can compare a structure to up to 30 genomes. One-to-one -one threading, where you use a specific set of coordinates for model building. And I'll come back to that because I think this is increasingly going to be an important aspect of FIRE. And again, people have proteomes now. So we have facilities to run batch jobs where you can run many sequences up to thousands. And if you request, we can do tens of thousands. And that's coupled to a job manager that keeps track of your jobs. So it's not just a one-off procedure. You can run large numbers. So fire alarm, the basic principle is, of course, that every week there are new structures in the PDB. So you could have run fire. You get a poor model or no hit. Next week, the PDB is updated. What we don't expect is every Monday morning, a user, instead of having their cup of coffee, runs fire again. We do that for them. 
So basically, we will run a new sequence against it, perform full fire modeling. And if there's a hit, a new hit which will give a better model, we email the results. And this is an example of the job processing where you've run a, a whole set of proteins from a genome and you can see which regions of the things have hit. You can click on that and you get the details of the job. So what's the impact of fire on the human proteome? So if you strung out the human proteome residue by residue, protein data bank coordinates would cover 17, 18%. Fire models cover 37% in addition, and the unmodeled due to disorder or requiring template-free approaches is the remainder. So as we heard, of course, everyone knows about AlphaFold, the way it works, you've got the sequence and you get remarkably good structures. There's, this really clearly is a breakthrough. And uh, as was reported, the EBI, uh, in collaboration with DeepMind, are now making about a million structures available of predicted by AlphaFold. However, I think it's worth noting that some of the press reports have really not given the full picture. And this includes uh, some top newspapers in the U UK. So yes, there are models for 98.5% of the human proteins. However, as people know, AlphaFold gives a predicted confidence of its prediction and if you look at the number of residues predicted with high confidence, it's only 58%. And if you compare that to the pie chart uh, we looked at before of PDB plus fire, it's 53%. So yes, clearly AlphaFold is producing quality models more than you can obtain by PDB and fire, but we haven't got data for 98.5% of the human proteome. So again, this was also addressed, what's the future of template-based modeling such as FHIR given AlphaFold? And clearly we're going to get AlphaFold models for many sequences, but as we said, there's still very, very many unmodeled sequences. And uh, what one can do, one approach, would be to augment the FHIR fold library with reliable AlphaFold models on a domain-by-domain -domain basis. Sometimes AlphaFold produces entire structures and the domain packing is problematic. Another area is that often there can be a range of confirmations for a protein, bound and unbound. And if you're interested in drug discovery, you might want the bound form. AlphaFold does not decide on whether, the temp it w on whether you're building an unbound or unbound. And in fact, as far as one can tell, it seems to just take an ensemble of the structures and if the ensemble is dominated by bound, you'll get a bound. If it's dominated by unbound, it will become unbound. So there, if you want to have a particular bound confirmation, it will be helpful to use the one-to-one -one threading. In addition, AlphaFold does not inherit ligand positions. So again, this is an area where you can inherit the ligand using fire in the longer term. And so, I think these are the areas where there's going to be a complementarity of using uh, AlphaFold and fire. So for example, if you've got an AlphaFold model for one bacterium and you're interested in another, then you could input the PDB of that bacterium protein into fire and get a, an homologous model. So I think these, these are going to be a symbiotic relationship. So the next topic is really missense variants. We know that looking at structure can provide a guide to what the impact of a genetic var missense variant is, whether it's a deleterious mutation. So here, trivially, a his to tire uh, variant leads to the abolition of a salt bridge, and that uh, leads to mental and physical disorders in, in carbohydrate and hydrase too. So what we wanted to develop was firstly, a program that not just didn't return a number, but gave an explanation. And also one that was able to take predicted structures, which we know are not going to be of the same caliber as crystal structure. So you can do very precise calculations, but then if you put in a predicted structure with its errors, those precise calculations may go wrong. So the basic principle is we generate a mutant structure from the wild type, 
and we compare the stereochemical features between mutant and wild type and then we will assess if it's structurally deleterious so for example here the residue there we replace we identify all residues in all side chains five angstroms radius from any atom in the variant position strip them out replace the side chain and rebuild using the squirrel and then we compare the wild type and the variant model and we look at a series of features disulfide bomb breakage have you introduced a buried proline have you broken a buried hydrogen bond uh, is a cis proline replaced and if any one of these stereochemical features are broken we say it's deleterious of importance is that the disulfide distance h bonds and salt bridges are increased by one angstrom so we allow a, a slop factor which will enable us to take into account errors in predicted structures. And that's shown in the next slide. We did a back-to-back -back comparison of the positive rate when you have the crystal structure, the true positive and the false positive rates compared to the fire model built, assuming we didn't know the PDB from a homologue at an identity range. And you can see almost no degradation in predicted in both the true positive and the false positive rates so because we chose the features carefully and allowed this additional one angstrom we believe that you can use missense 3d both on experimental and on predicted structures and just to illustrate that uh, over here this is the crystal structure we saw before and here in the predicted structure, we've correctly identified the salt bridge and its abolition over here. And this is a predicted model with 36% identity and a root mean square deviation of two angstroms from the true answer. So fire, so missense 3D is able to work effectively not only on experimental structures, but on predicted structures. And clearly, there's no reason why you also can't use an alpha fold or an int fold model. And on the web page, you can either give a position on a protein sequence or you can input your protein structure and identify the position of your variant. And so you can use fire or you could use int fold or alpha fold or whatever and run the algorithm. And the results are an image and a detailed analysis telling you in red which features are deleterious. And this is important in clinical work where you need an explanation to enhance your proposal that a variant is of clinical importance. So, so this can actually firm up a clinical diagnosis and having a text rather than just a number is a major value. And then what we've gone on is to run missense 3d on a database of fire predicted and pdb structures and mapping variants that are in the standard nomad clinvar and uniprot databases and so if it's there you can quickly click on it and get the answer and see whether so you can search by gene or uniprot id you then search see the variants you get a list of variants you can click to download the report so you have your clinical explanation and that shows you the sort of thing it would say uh, which is it minor allele and why it's predicted dangerous or not and a recent work is extending missense 3d to protein protein interfaces and just prior to my talk in the very section and you could see no doubt the recording uh, my colleague Alessia David has reported the development and this shows that uh, looking at complexes you can find explanations that clearly with a tertiary structure when it's at the interface and exposed you don't and so this over the next few months is going to be incorporated into the MissSense 3D server and finally this is the collaboration with Kansas University where we are going to use not only PDB structures, but predict complexes using the GUID database approach 
from Iliavaxa's group. So we're going to take experimental structures, fire structures, generate complexes, and be able to identify uniprot variants and map them. So again, you search by uniprot or gene for a single protein, you will get a list of proteins with which it interacts. And then you can drill down and look at the various variants and examine it on a protein structure. And clearly the next step will be to incorporate Missense 3D PPI to provide explanations for the impact of these genetic variants. And so that really concludes the talk. We've looked at three resources, FIRE2, a template-based protein structure prediction. Again, AlphaFold can be useful in providing starting models, or if you're particularly keen on the boundary, missense 3D to identify the impact of genetic variants and GUIA, where predicted complexes are available onto which we've mapped uh, missense variants from Unicrot. And I thank you for your attention. Excellent. So what questions do we have? Any questions from the virtual attendees? No, no questions right now. I suppose one question I had as it relates to the different residues um, that you have high confidence in and in the comparison that you shared with your method compared to AlphaFold. For those residues, do you have a sense as to how many of those are more sites of interest, for example, binding sites or conserved amino acids versus um, more- That's yes, an excellent question. Yeah. Uh, an excellent question. Yeah, so certainly, I mean, what one sees is that uh, in the conserved regions, which typically would be active sites, uh, the agreement between these different uh, modeling procedures is much closer compared to the agreement uh, when you've got loops. So some of these variations you get are really loop regions, and clearly these are challenging. But in a lot of areas, for example, if you're interested in developing drugs, then the binding sites are going to be well predicted. And in fact, you know, I mean, alpha fold is better in, in, uh, than fire, but in many applications, this, this difference isn't important. I'm not saying in some it has, certainly with molecular replacement, it's been seen that the alpha fold models can sometimes lead to a solution where fire models can't, but uh, it still gives an indication and they're confident regions which are good in most of these template-based algorithms. Excellent, thank you. Is there are no other questions? It's, oh, there is a virtual question. Um, no, I have a question. Oh, you have a question. Yeah. Okay, great, excellent, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Um, uh, hi, Marco, thank you for your talk. Um, what the quality parameters you use to uh, consider the crystal structure for modeling? Uh, from PDB? Uh, I, I, well, we use a representative database uh, and uh, we aim to use uh, a high resolution structure, though that's not, uh, I mean, when, when, as we don't regularly update the template library, and so there could be a newer structure uh, which is of better quality. But given the sort of root mean square deviation between the predicted and the uh, template, I don't think those are going to be of major differences. And if you find something, you can always use the one-to-one -one threading if you've got a bet if you found a, a PDB structure that's much better. Okay, thank you.